University of Law, Sayyid Ahmed Nawaz Zaidi, member of the Moot Court Cell AMU, extend a cordial welcome to our esteemed guests who will educate the final round of today's event, that is Professor Hafizul Rahman in Draft Faculty Moot Court Competition 2022. I would now like to, like to introduce everyone to the esteemed judges. We have among us Mr. Ujwal Sinha, practicing advocate since 2018 at the office of senior advocate Mr. Amal Leki in Delhi. <laughs> Secondly, we have Mr. Faham Ahmed Khan, who is currently pursuing LLM at the University of Cambridge, England and holds the position of the President of Cambridge University Graduate Law Society. And lastly, we have Mr. Aman Aran, who is currently the law clerk, come legal researcher in the Chamber of Justice Krishna Murari, Judge, Supreme Court of India. Also, I would like to mention specifically that all the three judges for today are the former Moon Court Secretaries of Law Society AMU. With due permission of the bench, we would like to begin with the final round. Judgment of uh, Chief Justice Deepak Mishra, wherein it was specifically held that 
a letters printed appeal cannot lie in a criminal matter irrespective of the fact whether it was uh, whether at the high court uh, the petitioner had gone under article 226. So you have gone under 226 and then you are filing an, an LPA before a division bench in a criminal matter. You know, since we are filing an SMP in the Supreme Court. So in the high court you had filed an LPA also before a division bench. I will have to be a little matter. I will have to please you with more You will have to satisfy us that how can you file an LPA in a criminal matter. But if the genesis is wrong, then you are coming to the Supreme Court is also wrong. You will have to. Your Lordship, it would mention. Your Lordship, it, this was mentioned in the preposition. <coughs> so, uh, we were not. This thing was not debatable. Yes, judges are not be abiding by the proposition. If an LPA doesn't lie, as a matter of principle, the Supreme Court is categorically right. The LPA will not lie in a criminal matter. So, can you, can you uh, approach the Supreme Court against that order with itself with bad in I have to really know this uh, I take the permission to approach the next video. Now, I hope I have satisfied my laws as far as the issues of the case are concerned and facts of the case are concerned. Now, I request my laws to kindly refer to page number 13 for the issue. Now, the issue number one is whether the transfer of the investigation from the state police to the CBI by the judgment in order dated 1 7 2020 of the Honorable High Court's division meant violative of the federal structure of the Constitution of the Republic of Hindustan or not. The appellants humbly submit that it was indeed violative of the federal structure of the Constitution of the Republic of Hindustan for reasons more than one, Your Lordships. Now, reason number one is, I request Your Lordships to kindly refer to page number 13, paragraph number 2, which is which talks about section 6 of the DSPE Act. Now, section 6 of the DS, DSPE Act explicitly calls for the consent of the state government. And as stated earlier on 16 3 2020, the state government had withdrawn its consent. Therefore, the order of the Honorable High Court goes against the plain provisions of the Act itself. And I'd also like my laws to refer to page number 14. So you are saying that the power of judicial review will be hit by section 6? No, Your Lordship. Uh, on the power of judicial review will come into play only if there are certain exceptional circumstances. Uh, but here no material facts was presented before this Honorable Court to say that there were some exceptional, exceptional circumstances. It was based on media facts and reports and accusations, Your Lordship. Now, Paragraph number 4, page number 14 talks about the state of West Bengal versus Committee for Protection of Democratic Rights. Here I will request my lords to the second paragraph of the quoted paragraph itself, the extraordinary power as my lords is referred, must be exercised sparingly, cautiously, and only in exceptional circumstances. However, with utmost regard to the That is why the Supreme Court has written down the path. The Supreme Court says that yes, we will apply and use it in exceptional circumstances. We deem them appropriate and it's an exceptional circumstance. But the exceptional circumstances is what appellant state is contesting your options. Now, the Honorable High Court, there was no material fact presented before the Honorable High Court to say that the investigation of the state police was indeed sham. And merely because the accused persons belong to the party in power and the uh, victims belong to the, the deceased victims belong to the party in opposition, is no ground to say that the investigation was indeed performed free or biased, your lordship. Therefore, what else ground would be to say that the investigation is biased? Your the lordship, uh, the respondent will have to substantiate the claims that there was some direct Achha. help from the state government to the accused also favor. There is no, there, nothing has been substantiated. Is the charge sheet on record? Yes, your lordship. Is the charge sheet which was filed in record? No. Yes, your lordship. What does the charge sheet say? The, cha uh, the, charge, the charge sheet is not, the no problem says that the charge sheet was filed, but it doesn't say that what, what was the. Yes, your lordship. Is, it is silent on that, so you cannot say that the charge sheet was biased. If it is silent, your lordship, then we use it in, in the interpretation that favors us, your lordship. Now, therefore, as far as this particular reasoning is concerned, it is humbly submitted before this honorable court that the evasion of the consent of the state government in a matter that concerned it is not only violating of the federal structure, but as well as arbitrary and unwarranted, and clearly it goes against the plain provisions of the Act itself, your lordship. Now, have you referred to Section 21 of the General Clauses Act? No, Your Lordship. Section 21 of the Tanjur Clauses Act clearly states that where, where any order, notification, etc. has been issued by a government, it can clearly resign it and revoke it. So, you just submitted that resigning or revocation of consent by the state government in a matter that concerns it is violative. So, how, how come uh, you say that it is violative? No, Your Lordship. The state government has all the powers vested in it to withdraw its consent. but. The evasion of the consent is, is what is violating of the federal structure. The evasion of the uh, evasion of the requirement of the consent is what is violating. How do you differentiate between the two? I suppose I am the state government. I have section six. I can very well deny the consent because the power is vested in me by the virtue of this statute. However, 
if the order of the high court says that my consent is not at all required, it is violative of the federal structure. Why? Because I have the power. The, the matter concerns me, the crime has, committed, has been committed in my, my state of options. I hope I'll satisfy my thoughts. And I, I'll request my lawyers to kindly refer to page number 16, which talks about entry 18 of list 2nd of 7 schedule and entry 2 of list 2nd of 7 schedule. Entry 18 says that while expanding, basically the crux is, while expanding the jurisdiction of the state from one state to the other, police, it will have to require the consent of the state government. And entry 2 says that police is a matter of state subject. Therefore, a harmonious and constructive reading of these two entries will give us an idea that the state was best, the state was vested with the power to give consent or to revoke. And therefore, as far as this reason is concerned, it is humbly submitted. And that again, the ev evasion of the consent was clearly goes against the plain provisions of the Constitution itself, Your Lordship. Now, I will not take more than two minutes, Your Lordship. Now, the third, the third reason is, it is violative of the precedent set in the SR Mumbai versus the UN of India. Now, this is a very landmark case as far as the Constitution is concerned. The appearance vehemently argued here that the order of the Honorable High Court has the capability to then shatter the very foundations of the federal structure, that is Constitution rests on, and federal structure as has been uh, categorized as a part of the basic structure of the Constitution. Now, I'll request my lords to kindly refer to page number 18, paragraph number 14, the quoted text, line number 2. It says the federal principle is dominant in our constitution and the principle of federalism has not been voted down. Now, cutting it short, it says it means that the states are sovereign to the fees which are left to them. Emphasis to be supplied on, it, on this, your lordships. Therefore, by depriving the state government a matter that concern is, not only makes a mockery of the federal structure of the constitution, as well as makes a mockery of the larger scheme of constitutionalism as well. Now, uh, I'll request my lords to kindly allow me to give a brief introduction about constitutionalism. Because I believe it is funded highly of the lodges. Because among the many uh, visions that were drafted in the constitution, there was one philosophy of constitutionalism. Now, constitution, constitutionalism is a philosophy that puts restrictions on abuse of power, on inhibition of power, basically entire features of tyranny. Therefore, the order of the Honorable High Court to evade the consent not only goes against the theory of constitutionalism, uh, the opinion humbly submits that the Honorable High Court has urged. Proposition which you are trying to make, can you please be a bit clearer? Yes, Your Lordship. While denying the consent that the state government had, the Honorable High Court has, the Honorable High Court's order has the capability or the ability of ramp shattering the very foundations of the federal oh, structure. Oh, please tell us. Yes, Your Lordship. Uh, state is a matter of police subject. Yes, Your Lordship. Early police is a Police is a matter of state subject. Now, the DSP explicitly says that while transferring the case from the police to the CBI, consent is relevant. Because this is a clear demarcation of powers, your lordships. If otherwise, if powers are not demarcated, the, the central government is all the agencies, it will create a hegemony, your lordships. That is why the consent was overridden by the Honorable High Court judgment, and that is why it was violating of the federal structure of the constitution, your lordships. Now, my final, I'll request my lordship to kindly refer to page number 20, paragraph number 21. The dictums of this on this honorable court from time to time to qualify concepts like federalism, judicial review, and rule of law, and democracy as a part of the basic structure of the constitution. And a harmonious and constructive reading of these provisions will give us an idea that constitutionalism is indeed a basic is a part of the basic structure of the constitution. This is as far as the uh, reasons for the violation. Can the consent be unilaterally withdrawn, or whether the central government also has the part? No, no, your lordship. Their consent can be unilaterally withdrawn. So, without any reason? Um, if the consent which was granted was for a valid reason, so that the CBI can investigate in a particular state, and the genesis of it being so that there is a harmony between the, the CBI and the police. In the same way, you are saying that I will grant the consent with the confidence of the central government. When it comes to withdrawal of the consent, I can withdraw it unilaterally. This is the submission which you are trying to make. Your lordships, the is consent. this the submission you are trying to make? Yes or no? Could you please? I am saying you say that, and my question to you is whether the consent, when it is granted, is it unilateral or it's only on the basis of the state government alone? Understood, your lordships. We are saying that the consent has been talked about under section DSP. Now, we how is that consent granted? Your lordship. How? What is the procedure for granting of consent? I have to create more information. That's the that's the major fallacy in your argument. You don't know when when you don't know that how a consent is granted. How can you say that the consent which has been taken away is bad in law? Your lordships, there is nothing in the DSP that says that the state government has to give explanations by withdrawing the consent. 
Nothing in this order granting or rejecting consent can be passed without any reasons, and it will pass the muster of law. That's what you are. That's what the proposition. No, you are right. The state government will give its reasons, but as far as this present case is concerned.
the victim part by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of West Bengal versus Committee of Protection of Democratic Rights, contrary to law or not. I would argue that it is an allowing the dominancy of the central government which is against the spirit of the separation of power. <coughs> and the issue number three, which says dictum passed by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Kazi Land and Dorji versus CBI, limits the power of the state of law. And I would argue on the grounds of although the president limits the power of the state government, makes mockery of the federal scheme, no provision of the don't read, don't read. No provision of the DSP Act which affirms retrospective revocation of the consent is given and unwanted encroachment by the state government by the central government is done and which violates the seventh schedule which says the division of power of the state government and the central government. I would request your lordship to kindly refer to page number 21. I would start my argument with the utmost humble, utmost regards to the Honorable Supreme Court that it is humbly submitted that relevant precedent in the state of West Bengal versus Committee of Protection of Democratic Rights <coughs> has presently has seriously impaired the federal structure of the constitution and as all the largest scheme of constitutionalism. How? How? Why the con <coughs> constitutionalism is impaired? As for the constitu constitutionalism, the presence of separation of power should be there. And presence of separation of power is breached here because... Council, what were the facts of this judgment state of West Bengal versus Committee of Protection of Democratic Rights? The, uh, uh, your lordship, in this uh, case, the, the Honorable Supreme Court has advised the CBI to work, to take up the investigation instead of the state police. Sorry, please come again. In this case, the Supreme Honorable Supreme Court had advised this CBI to take up the investigation. I'm asking the facts of the case. I'm not asking what was held in that judgment. I'm asking the facts. What led to the Supreme Court saying that yes, it can be exercised in another Supreme circumstances? What are the facts of the case? Yeah. Moreover, Leonard Council, what exactly is the moot point that you want to, the, the crux, what exactly is the point that you are challenging in this Kazi Land Bill? That uh, the involvement of the CBI is contrary to law. That why, why there is an involvement of the CBI when there is a state police working on the investigation? They have already given the report of the investigation. If, if, Kindly, I request your lordship to kindly refer to statement number three, which quotes a case of S. Nagaraj, the state of Karnataka. There's a quotation there, and I quote, review literally and even judicially means re-examination or reconsideration. I would like to emphasize in the words re-examination or reconsideration, the basic philosophy inherent in the universal acceptance of human fallibility. Supreme Court as an organ works, works by, uh, by humans, and you know, human fallibility is the basic tendency of humans. Yet, in the realm of law, the courts and even the statutes lean strongly in favor of the finality of decisions legally and properly made. I would like uh, your lordship to kindly refer to page number 22, statement number 4. I would read in continuation of the statement number 3. As a matter of principle, the Supreme Court and the High Court under <coughs> Article 32 and 26 cannot, talk, cannot direct transfer investigation to CBI. No, no, your lordship, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they are not giving... You are saying that the judgment is wrong. The constitution of the judgment is wrong. Uh, the judgment, I'm not um, questioning the judgment. I'm just saying that it is contrary to law. Because... How is it contrary to law? Which means what? Which means what is that? Which means that you are contesting the judgment, right? To be clear in your approach. Yes, yes your lordship. I beg your pardon. I just want I just wanted to clear that the state the uh, Supreme uh, Honorable Supreme Court is taking away the power of the state by working so what do you understand by the meaning of power of judicial review? Power the um, court's power to review a ju uh, judgment already given. So the Supreme Court and High Court are constitutional courts. So you are saying that the legislature will whittle down the power of the constitutional court to say that you cannot that the Supreme Court and High Court cannot direct investigation to CBI. I'm not saying that, you know, sir. That's what you are saying. That's what your memorial says. No, uh, if, if, uh, if I'm being wrong with words, I'm sorry, you know, sir, but I'm not intended to say that. I'm just saying that the court, the Honorable Supreme Court is not giving a proper proper opportunity to the state police to work on the jurisdiction. That will be decided on facts to facts basis. So let this judgment of state of West Bengal as a democratic right hold the, hold the field and then you will say that we will decide on facts to facts basis. Uh, but uh, my, my problem, um, I'm dealing with the problem on this case is your, your lordship that they're not even giving a chance to investigate.
They are giving just three to four days uh, when you read in the statement of facts that they are giving only four days for investigation. And if investigation has been taken, even though then the Honorable uh, High Court has given the power to the CBI. If I may, Your Lordship. Kindly refer to statement number four, and I will read with, in continuation with statement number three, and post, it is humbly submitted that by the virtue of Article 137, which says judicial review, this Honorable. Uh, Honorable Court has a legitimate authority to do the needful and set precedent claiming needs a revision. I would like President, do you want us to read? This president of, uh, um, this victim of uh, state of West Bengal versus uh, uh, battle law. I, I what do you want to, what do you want Supreme Court to say? I, I want to, I want Supreme Court to revisit the judgment and uh, say what? Allow, allow the state police to work on the investigation a little That's what we are saying. You will say that the judgment is right and then you will allow him to investigate the matter. What do you want from us? Do you want the judgment to be reversed or uh, the judgment to be updated? Um, I want this judgment to be reversed, your losses. So, so you want to say that the constitutional court under Article 32 and 206 does not have the power to direct CBI investigation. This is what this is the pending of this judgment? And you want to say that you want to reverse this finding? Uh, I don't want to put a limitation on the powers of the Supreme Court and the High Court. No, you're not, sir. I don't. Then what? I, I just, I just want, I just want, I intend the Supreme Court to just give some time to, to the investigation done by the state police. That's why you agree. We will say that the judgment is right. We will uphold the judgment and say that an opportunity will be given to the state of. You are the state of AP to investigate the matter. No, dear Lord, I am arguing the judgment is wrong because they have not given prior time to the state police to work on the investigation and they have handed over the CPI. Which judgment is wrong, Council? Which judgment is wrong? The judgment of the state of West Bengal. What was held in the judgment? I am repeating again and again for your understanding. Where does the time question arise? What are the facts of this case? That was the first question I just put to you. I feel ignorance here. That's why you're not understanding our question. I feel ignorance. I beg your pardon, Your Lordship. What do you want from us now? I, I just want Your Lordship to kindly uh, give this matter to the state police and give a the judgment and transfer the investigation to the state police. Is this what, what do you want? Yes or no? Last question. Yes, Your Lordship. This judgment will be upheld. Yes, Your Lordship. Third issue goes against you. Right here. Kindly refer to, if I may, Your Worship, kindly refer to page number 23, statement number 8, as has been held in King Emperor vs. Fajr Nazir case. What was the tax of the judgment? And what is the citation which you have given of Kuala Nazir 1974? 1974. Emperor, the judgment, Kuala, King Kuala Nazir Ahmed vs. Nazir Ahmed, the citation 1974. King Emperor vs. Fajr Nazir. Emperor ceased to be in after the independence of but your lordship, the, uh, this citation has been taken from SEC. It's absolutely wrong. It's the area 1940 by PC Privy Council Judgment 18. I would leave judgment is not of the Supreme Court. It's of the Privy Council. I would leave this point to the wisdom of the your lordship. Not the wisdom. We are stating you the right thing. You stand. You say you stand right. Please. Please. In this case, the function of the judiciary and police are complementary and not overlapping. However, this is a set precedent. What's the anything related to the process in this case? Anything related to the procedures of how the police should investigate? That's what we are asking. Because I'm not aware of what the facts are. Please state those judgments, please quote those judgments of which you are aware of the facts. Otherwise, what? I beg your pardon. Kind, uh, I request your doctor to kindly um, refer to page number 25. Statement number 19. Quoting the observations in respect of the policy making by Lord Justice Lord and Lauker in Lake of Airways, Chief Justice Honorable A.S. Anand quoted, and I quote, the judicial vessel needs to be blown for a purpose to end with caution. It needs to be remembered that the court cannot run the government and the duty of implementing the constitutional safeguards that protect individual rights. Let the council, you know, please proceed to the next.
I will start the issue that I plan most humbly submits that the decision of the majority in the case of Kazi, uh, Land and Kauji versus CBI, encroaches the authority of the power of the state. What are the facts of this case? Uh, uh, in, in this case, the concept of federalism. Facts, facts are different from what you are, what was said in the case. In the judgment of this case, the concept of federalism on whose pillar the structure that is the constitution rests is being violated. And I, I would present the argument further with on two points. That is, there is nothing in the DSP Act which limits the state from withdrawing the consent. And number two, police and law and order are the subjects of the state. Mr. President, Thompson, what is the main point held in this Kaji Just give me a short What is the, exactly the main point? For one of this, one of the that is that has been taken That um, the, the central government encroaches the power of the state. See, you are saying that this judgment is an attack on the federal structure of the constitution. Whereas the main point that has been held in this judgment is simply that the state, if it revokes a consent and, and has been uh, granted under the provisions of TSP, it will have prospect. So how is it an attack on the federal structure of the constitution, please? Because, um, your lordships, uh, because the uh, domains of the two uh, uh, federal structures has been given, and the, uh, the state of India is quasi-federal with centralized structure, but involvement in the domain of the state and the center, when the state encroaches in the domain of the center, when the center encroaches in the domain of the state. Then the council, you didn't get my question. <coughs> the question is simply, the judgment says, that if states revokes the consent granted under the provisions of PSP, the pro revocation of that consent will have a prospective action. And it is settled principle of law that laws, until unless specifically provided for, do have a prospective operation. So how is a prospective operation of a revocation of consent by the state attached to the federal structure of the This is the question. Because uh, the state it is interfering with the decision of the state. That's right. So you are basically saying that Supreme Court being a constitutional court, or moreover High Court being a constitutional court, cannot interfere with the decisions of the state. This is what you are saying. My argument number one, there is nothing in the DSP Act which limits the state from withdrawing the consent. It is humbly submitted that if the states have been vested with the power to grant consent for the CBI, we will be asked this question whether this withdrawal of consent is unilateral. Whether this withdrawal of consent is unilateral. I would request your lordship to kindly refer to page number 28. I would never be present law and order the subjects of the state list. Here it is given the constitution makers for the opinion to place the subjects of police and law and order the state list. Thereby, if the state is to withdraw the consent retrospectively, it will very well be the authority to carry the investigation to its own place, hence for barging and for the CBI's highly high avoided. I would end my argument. With the, with, with the saying that I will and how we submit that the said president is an attack on the sovereignty and the authority of the state and is by virtue of this an attack on the federal scheme of the constitution itself and therefore liable to be overturned. I would request your lordships to, can I read the prayer? I seek permission your lordships to, to read the prayer. But according to us, I don't think you have concluded the issue because we couldn't get anything from this. What were you trying to argue? Or could you read the heading of your issue? I wanted to argue, Your Lordship, that there is nothing in the DSP Act which limits the state from withdrawing the consent. Have you done that? I tried to, but you said, move on. <laughs> not for this issue, not for this issue. The second issue has, the previous law says that you don't want to contest the second issue, but could you, uh, we give you 15 more minutes, we give you 15 more seconds or 30 more seconds, if you want to plead this issue first, without interference if you want. Yeah, my argument was that 
uh, police and the law and order are subject of the state, and the state should control them. And I seek permission of your lordship to kindly enter. Wherefore, in the light, wherefore, in the light of the issues raised, arguments advanced. Don't interfere. Don't interfere. What do you want from us, sirs? Don't interfere. You are for the Supreme Court. Don't interfere. You don't know what you want. Then impute judgment on the order of this uh, honorable Supreme Court in the state of West Bengal versus Committee of Protection of Democratic Rights. It's contrary to law. No, and you just said you are admitting the patent. This is right. So this is where is declined next. The judgment passing the dictum uh, of uh, Kazi Land of Dozi versus CBI limits the power power of the state or not. And the judgment and the judgment of the five judge constitutional bench of the honorable court in the state of West Bengal. Be overruled by exercising the power grant to the honourable court. Who still wants to vote? Overruling, saying what? Yes, yes, your honour. As far as any other order, directions, or relief that it may be incurred in the interest of the judge. Justice Council, you didn't even uh, speak your, uh, your the main prayer that you are, that is listed on head number one. That is the impugned judgment of the High Court of A and P. We set aside. You didn't mention this prayer. That's the main prayer. I beg your pardon, Your Lordship. The impugned judgment and the order of the Honourable High Court of the State of AMP dated 7 5 2020 be set aside on the grounds of being violated of the federal structure of the Constitution of the Republic of Hindustan. The judgment of the five judge constitutional bench of the Honourable Court in the State of West Bengal versus Committee for Protection of Democratic Rights as reported. Thank you, Your Lordship. Greetings to the bench. The council is honored to recognize the esteemed presence of your lordships. The council seeks permission to address the bench collectively as your lordship. Much obliged, your lordship. The council shall represent the respondents in the case of state of ANP versus Union of Hindustan. If the bench is well versed with the facts of the case, the council seeks permission to. I think you have come for some other uh, case, not this case, right? The case that petitioners were pleading. You have not come for this case? Uh, we are pleading for the respondents. So the same case you are pleading, right? Yes. But your statement of petition is different. How can it be different from the petitioners? See, if, uh, what I am trying to say, Honorable Bench, that if the bench is well versed with the statement of facts of the case, uh, I would like to proceed with the arguments. Would you want? Uh, would you? Would you want to elaborate on the point why you have come in Article 137 and the petitioners? The petitioners have come for Article 137. What do you want us to do? Your Lordship, we uh, your Lordship, we are trying. Uh, you just want to over uh, uphold the decision of the Honorable High Court of ANP with the transfer that the investigation. What is Article 137? Article 137. Uh, yes, Lordship. You. So you want you first say that you want to say that the judgment of the Supreme Court is correct in law, and then you have come before the Supreme Court upholding that, reviewing that particular judgment. Your Article 137 of Constitution uh, states review of judgment or orders by the Supreme Court subject to the provisions. What do you what do you want from us? Uh, your Lordship is only submitted that we want to we want you to uphold the decision. The jurisdiction is wrong. You are in the wrong court. Could you go could you go and read the first point in the prayer? First point. states that the transfer of investigation from the state of ANP to the CBI is in accordance with the law and is not contrary to it. Can we do this under Article 137? Can we do this? No, you are not. So why are you wasting our time? <laughs> we want... I beg your pardon, you are not. We have heavy backlog of cases. You keep seeing CJ saying that there is a heavy pendency of articles and you are now wasting our time. You have wasted one hour. What do you want to do? You will hear it some other day. 145.3, clause 3 of the Indian Constitution is the correct card.
Actually, there are two issues that need to be dealt with. Issue number one is whether the transfer of investigation to the CBI is constitutionally valid or not. Issue number two is whether the dictum advanced by the Honorable Supreme Court of Pakistan in the case of State of West Bengal versus Committee for Protection of Democratic Rights contradicts the constitutional provisions or is consistent with them. I, Council number one, will be dealing with issue number one. My co-counsel will be dealing with issue number two. The Council seeks permission to start with the arguments advanced. Your Lordship, in respect to the first issue, the, uh, the Council pleads that the transfer of investigation to CBI is constitutionally valid since, first, the transfer of investigation to the CBI from the state police does not violate the federal character of the Constitution of Pakistan. Second, ensuring free and fair... Leonard Thompson, are you aware of the fact that uh, Guwahati High Court a few years back in the judgment of Narendra Kumar had stated that Delhi Special Police Establishment Act nowhere prescribes about CBI and it had ruled CBI as unconstitutional. Are you aware of this fact? Yes, Your Lordship. Yes, Your yes, uh, Second, ensuring free and fair trial in order to achieve justice is the duty of the courts. Third, the transfer of investigation to CBI safeguards a more impartial and fairer investigation. Argument 1, Your Lordship. Uh, can you please refer to page number 1, paragraph number 2? The whole notion that the that the transfer of investigation to the CBI violates the federal character of the Constitution of Pakistan is a misconceived one because the transfer of investigation was done under an order dated 11th of May 2020. Yes, uh, it is humbly submitted your lordship that this honorable Supreme Court of Pakistan has stated that order. Is the matter pending in the Supreme Court? Yes, your lordship. Yes, sir. What is the status of that matter? I am currently unaware about the current status, but I know that it had it had been stayed. So I was arguing that the notion that it, it violates the federal character of Pakistan is a misconceived one because it was done under an order dated 11th of May 2020 by a single judge bench of the Honorable High Court of ANP. Considering the imperative to retain public confidence in the impartial working of the state agencies and not by the central government. Article 142 of the Constitution of Pakistan empowers the Honorable Courts to deliver, uh, to use whichever means possible to end delivering the complete justice. If you may please refer to paragraph number 3 of page number 4, the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Himanshu Kumar and others was the state of Chhattisgarh and others. What are the facts of this case? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure I'm not aware about the facts of the case. It was held. 